The Kaiwo is one of nine public ceremonies performed as part of the burial ritual. Like the eight other major public ceremonies, the Kaiwo is performed to guide the soul of the deceased on its journey to the ancestral village. The Kaiwo are bamboo rods to which Kaidaga leaves, leaves from the Akuma palm, are attached. The Kaidaga is an Arawe, or spirit, of the Paiwoe clan. The clan is responsible for giving all members of the village permission to perform the ceremony. The Paiwoe also supervise the performance of this ritual. For information on other Arawe, touch the feather icon. Every Bororo clan has rights over a number of Arawe. The King Vulture is an Arawe of the Kie clan. An Arawe of the Apiborege is the Harpy Eagle. Clan members publicly claim the rights to make objects associated with their Arawe. The Bokodori Esherai claim the giant armadillo as a clan Arawe and exert the right to make armadillo claw ornaments. Quido is the Bororo name for the blue and yellow macaw. The Quido is an Arawe of the Paiwoe clan, and the colors blue and yellow are associated with the clan and expressed in the ceremonial objects made and used by the Paiwoe. Everyone in the village participates in the Kaiwo ritual. The ceremony was observed by art historian Elizabeth Zarur in 1986. She has commented on her experience in several scholarly papers. Early in the morning, on the day of the ceremony, young men carry bundles of akuma leaves into the men's house and fashion them into long costumes that will be worn at the ceremonial dance later that afternoon. Each costume is constructed with approximately 20 palm leaves. The central quill of the leaf is beaten with a stone or hammer. The pounding makes the palm flexible and feathery in appearance, endowing the costume with an airy movement that is used to a great advantage during a dance. For a glimpse at feathercraft, touch the feather icon. Feather headpieces worn by men and women are an essential part of Bororo ceremonial costume. One type of woman's headpiece is the occipital ornament made of macaw and other bird feathers. It is worn by suspending a cord from the crown of the head and hanging the ornament over the shoulders. Sometimes it may be worn standing up behind the head. The occipital ornament is made by tying feathers to single or double cords. The occipital headpieces are worn by women and children. The colors and types of feathers indicate the clan of the wearer. A funeral ritual is a time for reciprocity in Bororo society. While the men work on their costumes, the shaman is decorated with akuma leaves. His head is crowned with a headdress, a pariko of the Badojeba clan. The shaman is the only one who may wear the headdress of his own clan during a funeral ritual. All others must exchange their ornaments with members of the opposite moiety. The shaman starts his chants accompanied by maracas and a pana flute. Men continue to work as women and girls enter the men's house and take positions behind the shaman. Led by the shaman, all begin to chant. The chanting continues for the rest of the morning. It ends when the women and shaman leave the men's house. In the afternoon, two men representing Araways are decorated in the men's house and leave for the plaza. Here, playing ritual flutes, they dance around the grave in counterclockwise movements. Their heads, necks, chests, arms, and legs are wrapped with akuma palm leaves. Long canes made of akuma palm and macaw feathers are tied to the dancer's hair with a long braided rope of hair taken from the heads of the deceased female's relatives. The costume's tail and the movement of the dancers creates the appearance of a macaw. A woman fans the dancers representing the movement of the Arawe into the other world. For the importance of macaws in Bororo life, touch the feather icon.
Macaw feathers are used extensively in Bororo ornaments. Macaws are classified according to color, and each macaw is an ROA of a different clan. The Bororo believe that the ROA of their relatives temporarily return to the terrestrial world embodied in a macaw. Some macaws nest in cave openings traditionally used as burial places. The burial sites are thought of as access routes to the other world. Spiritually, macaws kept as pets provide temporary dwelling places for the ancestors. Physically, the domesticated birds provide a constant source of material for Bororo feather art. The Bororo claim they themselves are macaws, and throughout Bororo life, the relationship between Bororo and macaws is emphasized. After the Arroes clear the plaza, a long line of men fully covered in Akuma leaf costumes emerges from the men's house. Many of them wear the traditional Bororo headdress, parico. Each man carries two canes decorated with Akuma leaves. Women and girls join the men and all dance toward and around the grave. The dancers divide themselves into two lines alongside the grave in an east-west direction, the direction of the villages of Bacororo and Itubore, chiefs of the other world. For information on Paricos, touch the feather icon. A characteristic component of Bororo ritual life is the parico. The large radiating section of the parico is made of macaw tail feathers. The center section indicates clan affiliation. In the middle of a row of oropendula tail feathers, a motif is made of red and yellow macaw feathers bordered with stripes of black curaçao. The motif imitates the stripes on bumblebees and belongs to the Barojeba clan. Women and girls standing between the men hold the ends of the palm leaf canes. The canes are balanced carefully. If they fall, it would be a bad omen. When the dance leader shakes his maracas, the dancers all crouch and hop back and forth. The decorated canes move up and down, giving the appearance of bird wings in motion. The motion is repeated three times. Then all participants in one line exchange positions with all in the other line. The ritual exchange of places graphically illustrates the fundamental principle of Bororo society. The reciprocal rights, duties, and responsibilities shared by opposing moieties. For information on exchange between moieties, touch the feather icon. The Paiwoi clan of the Tukarege moiety is responsible for the Kaiwo ceremony. Village members who need to conduct the ceremony at the time of a burial must ask permission from members of the Paiwoi clan to do so. When the ritual is performed, Esherai wear the ornaments of Tukarege, and Tukarege wear the ornaments of Esherai. Near the end of the dance, women move to the edge of the plaza while men continue to swirl around the burial. The men then give a loud yell, and all women, girls, and uninitiated boys disappear into their houses, closing the doors and windows tightly. The dancers remove their Akuma leaf costumes and place them on top of the grave where the bamboo poles of the Parabara ritual and the Babasu skirts of the Toro ritual were placed before. The headdresses are placed at the head of the burial. The spirits then enter the village and eat with the men. As in the Toro and Parabara rituals, the same chosen person responsible for the soul of the deceased is positioned on top of the grave. And as a ritual flute is played, water is poured over him flowing from the living to the dead. Parabara. A Bororo funeral is a series of rituals performed to help the soul on its journey to the village of the dead. The Bororo do not believe that death comes about by natural causes. Instead, 
it is thought of as a temporary disruption in the universe brought on by the Bope, spirits who can use death as a punishment for violating the Barora way of life. Funeral ceremonies, which may last 35 to 40 days, are intended to petition the Aroe, or spirits of the ancestors, to guide the soul of the deceased to the other world. The ceremonies call upon living members of the village to reinforce social bonds and to strengthen links between the terrestrial and spiritual realms. For a ceremony restoring order to Bororo society, touch the feather icon. To avenge a Bororo death, a harpy eagle or jaguar must be killed. The avenger is usually the best hunter from the deceased's opposite moiety. In a ritual dance, the skin of the slain jaguar is presented to the family of the deceased. In return, the hunter receives the right to make and wear ornaments belonging to the deceased's clan. The jaguar hunter becomes one of the few individuals possessing the right to make and wear ornaments from two clans. By killing the jaguar and releasing the soul of the deceased, the hunter acknowledges his duties and responsibilities to his moiety and village. By giving him the right to clan objects, the deceased's clan fulfills its obligations to the hunter. Thus, through death, Bororo reaffirm cultural values of reciprocity. During a funeral, each clan is responsible for one or more rituals in a complex of ceremonies that involve the entire village. A death calls upon all Aroe to help the soul on its journey to the other world. The rituals take place during the period in which the body is temporarily interred in the plaza west of the men's house, covered with leaves and allowed to decay. When the flesh is decayed, the bones are cleaned, decorated, and permanently buried. The funeral rites require decorating representations of a number of Aroe. Since clan members cannot represent their own Aroe, they must rely upon all other clans to perform ceremonies to help the soul of the deceased enter the ancestral village. The funeral expresses the reciprocity that exists between the two moieties of a Bororo village. The rituals confirm relationships between the physical and the spiritual realms. They reaffirm Bororo values and ensure the continuation of communal life. For information on Aroe, touch the feathered icon. Aroe is soul. It is the life of dead ancestors and spirit beings living in the ancestral village of the other world. Aroe are spiritual. They are immortal forms of plants and animals and all physical things. The Aroe rarely venture into this world. Their domain is connected to the Bororos via waterways and caves. Aroe are timeless. They are masters of spatial and social order. They regulate the physical layout of villages and maintain distinctions between clans and subclans. The Parabara, or ritual of the split bamboos, is one of the funeral ceremonies performed. The clan responsible for the ritual is Apiborege of the Tugarege Moiety. During the ritual, bamboo poles are shaken so that the split ends rapidly clack together, producing a sound resembling the cry of a small goose. The ritual and the bamboo clappers represent the Parabara Aroe, or spirits. The Bororo say the clacking noise hastens the separation of the soul from the terrestrial village and helps the spirit on its way to the other world. In the Parabara ritual, the representatives of the two cultural heroes, Bakaroro and Itubore, enter the main plaza from the Aije Ria, a pathway that connects to a sacred area outside the village circle. Bakaroro is painted in wide black stripes. He plays the Ika, a long trumpet-like instrument representing the spirit's voice. Itubore plays the Pana, a triple gourd flute. After their performance, all village members, except the female clan relatives of the deceased, join in the ritual. Participants dance around the grave in a counterclockwise direction while hitting the ground with the ends of their bamboo poles. 
After the dance, a man is smeared with white clay. The man personifies Aije, an aquatic monster associated with the underworld who tries to trap the soul of the deceased. A young girl, a relative of the deceased woman, leaves the mourning house for the first time since the death of her relative. She joins those at the graveside. Her hair is cut short as a sign of mourning. The girl is set to represent the soul of the deceased. A jaguar skin is placed behind her to symbolize the fact that the soul of the deceased is trapped inside a jaguar and that eventually a jaguar will be killed in revenge for the death caused by the evil spirits of the Bope. The killing permanently releases the soul of the deceased and completes the cycle of reciprocity, which reaffirms the bond between the moieties. Toro. After death, the soul of a Bororo travels to the ancestral village in the other world. To help the soul reach its destination, many rituals are performed in the village plaza where the deceased is buried in a temporary grave. When the flesh is decayed from the bones, the remains will be placed in a permanent grave. One of the first rituals performed is dedicated to Toro Kigaduryu, spirit of the Babasu palm shoots. The Kie clan is responsible for this ritual. It is performed by all members of the village Dressed in Babasu palm leaves, symbol of the Toro Kigaduri, the men begin a ritual dance. Women and girls from the entire village join in the ceremony, but do not wear Babasu palm leaves. The rituals are performed in the village plaza where the body of the deceased is temporarily buried. On the morning of the ceremony, the shaman opens the grave and inspects the decaying flesh. Water and herbs are added to hasten the decaying process. Later that morning, young men from the village travel to nearby fields and collect Babasu shoots for the ceremony. In the Baito, the men's house, men turn Babasu shoots into ritual Toro skirts. The central hard stem of the shoot is worked till soft, transforming the vegetable matter into feather-like leaves. A ceremonial headdress, pariko, a drum, two sets of maracas, some feather ornaments belonging to the deceased, and a babasu shoot are laid out in front of the central pole of the baito. When all is ready, the shaman is brought in. In the baito, the shaman starts chanting, accompanied by the beat of the drum and the occasional shaking of palm shoots. The chants call upon the birds to take the soul of the deceased to the Aije Bororo, the place where dead Bororo live. They also call upon the men to collect feathers for the ritual ornaments. As the shaman chants, the men work on the ritual skirts. Occasionally, they shout to punctuate a chant. Women enter the men's house and take positions behind the shaman, facing west toward the home of Bakororo, a Bororo culture hero. The women join the shaman in his chants. In the afternoon, the men gather in the Aije Muga, a ritual plaza on the west side of the village beyond the circle of houses. With bodies painted red, some men paint their faces and bodies in black patterns, indicating clan affiliation. Color and patterns displayed in large paricos also designate clan affiliation. But during funeral ceremonies, opposite clans exchange paricos. When all is ready, the men form a single line in the Aije Ria, a pathway between the outside plaza and the Bororo, the main plaza. The men then walk toward the Bororo. Because it is a place where spirits appear, women are not allowed in the ritual plaza outside of the village, but they join the men in the Bororo. The men dance in a single line, moving in a counterclockwise rotation around the grave. After a while, the women join the dance. The single line is broken as women leave the dance and the men form two equal lines beside the grave. Dancers in each line begin jumping and crouching in place. 
the choreography is commanded by a chant specialist who keeps the line dancing backwards and forwards. A man heading each dance line crosses in front of the grave and positions himself on the end of the opposite line. Chanting and choreography continue as all the men in one line exchange positions with all the men in the other. The exchange reflects the never-ending reciprocity between members of the two Bororo moieties. Men are again joined by women, and again all dance around the grave in counterclockwise movements. Men then remove their paricos and place them on the head of the grave. The palm leaf skirts are placed on top of the grave. A man chosen to represent the deceased soul on earth the Arawe Iyadu crouches on top of the grave, washing his sweat with water. For more information on the Arawe Iyadu, touch the feather icon. When a person dies, an adult male from the opposite moiety is chosen as a representative, the Arawe Iyadu of the deceased. Shortly after the death, the representative is decorated with down and an elaborate feather headdress. The person chosen is a good hunter who will eventually kill a jaguar or harpy eagle as revenge for the death of a village member. The Arawe Yadu will give the dead animal to the family of the deceased, who will, in return, give him the right to manufacture and wear the deceased's clan ornaments. At sunset, a fermented drink is brought to the men in the plaza. Women and uninitiated boys have already returned home and remain there for this part of the ritual. Food for the Arawe is placed before the elders' council. The spirits and the men eat together. The shaman is taken to the grave and chants. He is joined by another man and both shake maracas over the grave. Women re-enter the plaza and join in the chanting, which continues into the night. Village. Bororo villages are traditionally circular in layout and have a diameter of approximately 350 feet. At the center of the village, the Baito, the men's house, is positioned in a north-south direction. Houses are located on the rim or periphery of the village. Traditionally, adult men and initiated boys lived in the men's house. Women, uninitiated boys, married daughters, and their children lived in houses that surround the center of the village. Today, married men and women live in the same house, but men still spend a great deal of time in the traditional men's house. For information on the mythological founders of Bororo villages, touch the feather icon. In ancient times, the two culture heroes, Bakororo and Itubore, the chiefs of all Aoi, taught the Bororo how to live in circular villages and to choose marriage partners from the opposite half of the village. They gave ornaments and musical instruments with different colors and designs to the two clans of the original chiefs, the clan of the village makers and the clan of the eastern people. The cultural heroes taught the Bororo how to make their ornaments from the materials around them. The east-west pathway of the sun runs through the middle of the men's house, dividing the village into northern and southern halves. Each half, or moiety, is further divided into four clan sections that identify themselves as units sharing the same geographic section of the village. Each section is occupied by several households. The north and south halves of a village stand in opposition, but are dependent and complementary to each other. People from one half of the village marry people from the other half. Sacred ceremonies needed by one group are performed by people from the opposite group. The right to make and own ceremonial ornaments belongs to one group, but on specific occasions, the ornaments may be worn or made by someone from the opposite group. The Bororo make a distinction between the central ceremonial space of men 
and the peripheral domestic space of women. Family houses are the property and domain of women. When a man marries, he moves into the half of the village where his wife resides. Lineage is reckoned through the female line, and children have rights to names, rituals, ornaments, and resources in the physical and spiritual realms associated with the mother's clan. Through ceremonies and rituals associated with specific clans, participants replicate and reaffirm social relations and the physical divisions of space that constitute Bororo society. 